Hello, so I'm going to read out an article from the Daily Telegraph. Uh, please bear with me. It's um, a little bit lengthy, not not too long, but I think it's important to include all the details here. I will include in this uh, article anyway, but just in case people don't have time to read it, I'm going to, going to read it out myself now and then share my thoughts, because I think the issues here are very important. This is the headline. Cambridge PhD student shunned like a leper at university after fiancé falsely accused him of beating her up. A Cambridge PhD student has described how he was shunned like a leper at the university after his fiancé falsely accused him of beating her up. Matt Barron, 26, was banned from Christ College and sent home in disgrace when his girlfriend, fellow PhD student Sophia Cook, told police he had attacked her when she admitted to an affair. She told university bosses that she was terrified Mr Barron would attack her again and he was shunned by many of his friends and fellow students. But last week, a court cleared Mr. Barron of assault, with magistrates dismissing her allegations as inconsistent and not credible. He has now revealed the extent of his ordeal, and has said he wished he had never agreed to marry her, claiming he did so in a moment of weakness after she proposed while they were on holiday. Mr. Barron, who has just completed his doctoral thesis on marine paleontology, said, I was shunned like a leper. Women students shouted obscenities at me in the streets, and one male friend, whose wedding I attended, emailed to say that I was a vile scumbag who should rot in jail. I found myself banned from my college and sent home to Derbyshire in disgrace. Then, after I managed to convince the college to let me finish, finish my PhD work, I was treated like a pariah. Just hours after the verdict, Miss Cook posted an inflammatory message on her Facebook page saying genuine abuse victims should not come forward. She wrote, perhaps the victims of abuse or abuse or rape should avoid reporting anything to the police. The process can hurt, hurt far more than the abuse itself. But despite his ordeal, Mr. Barron said he had no criticism of the criminal system when investigating claims of abuse. He said, I think it is right to protect those who are victimised. If my suffering is the price to be paid for even one person being saved by intervention, then I accept it. Even though Mr. Barron was cleared of assault by battery, he must wait to find out if he will be allowed back into his college when officials meet later this month to discuss the case. Okay, um, there's a number of things that bother me about this case. Most of all, that pretty much the entire establishment of Cambridge University decided to vilify this man on an allegation. An allegation, not a verdict. These are students, these are professors, these are people who you would expect to use critical thinking. Now, a court of law has found this guy innocent because of an inconsistent um, testimony of the alleged victim. I have to say, I think women like this are utterly, utterly beyond the pale. They're despicable beyond belief. And my thinking is this, if he's guilty, and it's a case that uh, she has been misjudged, his attitude speaks volumes. The fact that despite what he has been through, he can actually be open-minded enough to consider genuine victims is quite astonishing. And I don't even agree with his position. I don't think that... Um, it's right that potentially innocent men are are basically put in the pillory without without evidence. And I also think it is another example of why um, defendants shouldn't be named in these sort of cases. Um, in this particular case, it was domestic violence, but there has been also examples. Um, not so long ago, there was a woman who was jailed, I'm pleased to say. Um, you know, it's not often I commend our justice system, but on that occasion, they got it right. They jailed her for repeated false rape claims. Um, she was exposed. The problem here is that when you get people like this, and I'm far more inclined to believe, as this report states, that there was um, too little evidence to go on. Um, I just, I mean, this is a court of law where they're looking at the evidence. She's obviously standing by her opinion, but 
I believe there are very, very manipulative women out there. And um, what I find very shocking is that people would jump to conclusions about this man, people who knew him, without even having any evidence, simply her word. Um, if it is found in later proceedings that she has actively lied, I think she should be charged. Um, these cases are always difficult. And the problem is domestic violence is a real thing. As I, uh, as I actually mentioned when I was talking about the Jake the Motza thing, because there are men out there who, who do abuse women and it's disgusting. Uh, there are also violent women and there are also manipulative women. The problem is, if you point that out, um, people think you're condoning the actual cases. It's not the same thing at all. You can acknowledge that a problem exists whilst also acknowledging that there are times when innocent people get blamed. Um, I think if she is innocent, I think if... You know, her statement, perhaps the victims of abuse or abuse or rape should avoid reporting anything to police. The process can hurt far more than the abuse itself. She isn't saying, um, I know what happened to me and she's lying. She's simply saying that uh, she didn't like the process. Maybe because it exposed her as a liar. Now, I am more inclined to believe his side of the story, not because he's a man, but because in a court of law, the magistrates found that there wasn't enough evidence to go on. Um, I, I think one thing that's striking about this is that someone can be punished whether they're guilty or not. The fact that he was kicked off his programme, the fact he was made a pariah, he was essentially being punished by Cambridge University on an allegation. I am very uneasy with people being punished on allegations. I can understand if someone works for, for example, a, a TV show or something like that, then negative publicity can damage the wider show. But I don't think someone should be vilified without evidence. And it sounds like that's what what's happened to this guy. I mean, regardless of whether you believe him or her, I would hope people would at least concede that it is disturbing that people automatically believe he is guilty before it's even went to court. That's what I find shocking. It's not like, um, well, he was let off from lack of evidence, but there's still strong suspicions. It's that her case was totally unreliable. Her testimony was totally unreliable. Um, I'll read that paragraph again. But last week, a court cleared Mr. Barron of assault with magistrates dismissing her allegations as inconsistent and not credible. Not credible. That is not a light statement to make. So it's not a case of, oh, well, we don't have enough evidence to go on, but he's probably guilty. The point here is that the accuser has been deemed to be not credible. That indicates to me that she's potentially a fantasist and a liar. I think women like this are disgusting because they know, I mean, she would have known full well that, especially with the way universities in Britain are nowadays, um, if it's a man's word against a woman, the woman will always be believed. And that is very unfortunate. Um, we should have a legal system whereby these cases are treated seriously. I mean, she's talking about uh, victims not coming forward. Victims should go forward. But if, if you have really been through an ordeal like that, there will be evidence. For a start, uh, there will be physical evidence, obviously. But if you are being honest about an ordeal like that, you're going to be consistent. She was ruled to not be consistent. Um, and incidentally, on, on the same page in the Telegraph, they report another case. Um, University student accuses friend of rape after waking up to find herself on top of him in bed. I'm going to read this one out briefly because I don't want to cover two cases in great detail. A university student was raped by a friend after she woke up at her halls of residence after an evening to the end of the to find herself on top of him in court. Um, heard. I mean, 
admittedly, I haven't read that uh, that report in full, so I'm not going to pass judgment on that. But it sounds it sounds dubious to me. She was on top of him, and they were both drinking. I don't know, but I'm not going to judge that case. Look, here's the thing, and I'll conclude with this. Domestic violence is a real problem, and I think men who really do that are, are despicable. I think they are absolute scum. But I also believe that women who knowingly lie are absolute scum. I think it's just as bad. Because even if a man is found, I mean, the fact that he's been cleared doesn't mean everything's going to be fine. There is still going to be that suspicion hanging around him as long as he's at Cambridge and maybe maybe for the rest of his life. And that's, for him to show the grace to actually say, if my suffering's a price of pain, now that doesn't sound to me like the, the typical sort of man who would be a thug and be a woman. Usually they are very um, arrogant. I, I don't know. I just, my inclination here is that I'm far more inclined to believe him than her. And I think if this woman really was, you know, if she really had been through that, her statement, she would have said, he's lying. She would have said, um, I know what happened to me, etc. But she's simply saying the process was stressful. It was an ordeal. Well, if you're going to charge someone for that, it is going to be, you know, it's a big thing. Anyway, I'll put a link to this article. I, I just think it is very disturbing. Whatever you think of this, even if you think I'm wrong and you think that maybe she is telling the truth, Wherever you think, I would hope that people would agree that to vilify someone before they've even been found guilty is a very, very dangerous thing. Uh, and I think it's very sad what he has went through. I mean, it's every man's worst nightmare. And I will say this, um, shame on those who were stigmatizing him. Those women who hurled abuse at him, they should apologize. And his so-called friend should be ashamed of himself. Um, I think that's despicable. So let me know your thoughts and I'll put a link to this story.